Hey yo, I'm gonna just start off this video by giving a round of applause to Matt Sagoto because he just got done writing one of the best character introspection chapters that he has done across the whole of the Kaiju number no. 8 series. By the time that we got to the end of chapter 95, bro, I just wanted to reach out and give Mina a hug. On top of that, man, I wanted to reach out and give Esau a hug. Esau seeing Mina come into the defense force and realizing immediately if we had her in the defense force, then my wife Hikari probably wouldn't have died versus Kaiju number no. 6. And then also seeing Kafka, a young Kafka, and seeing how much Kafka was always chasing his dreams as a child, yet he lost sight of who he was somewhere along the way, bro. Because Kafka did eventually give up on those dreams until Reno brought him back. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This chapter was jam-packed, bro. So let's get into it. <laughs> Hey, I know you see me rocking the button up today. That's because me and Mina came for business, G. Man, that was so corny. I'm sorry if you just listened to that. I really am. But this chapter started off with us seeing a young Mina and a young Kafka, which was an awesome sight to see. Side note, did any of y'all think that a young Mina honestly looked very similar to what Ren Shinonomi looks like now? There was one point where I flipped the page and saw Mina blast that hole at the wall whenever they were doing target practice. And I was like, bro, what? Is that Rin? But we saw a young Kafka and a young Mina talking to each other and they were just about to go in and test to join the defense force. Mina being 18 years old and Kafka being on his fifth attempt at trying to get into the defense force. And even at five attempts in, you still see that overwhelming confidence that Kafka has in not only himself, but in Mina at the same time. Mina is so nervous to go and take this test to join the force, but Kafka says, hey bro, don't worry about anything that's happening in the meantime. Just follow my lead and you're going to be okay. It's my fifth time going through, so at this point I'm an expert in testing. So just make sure that you do a good job and we'll get through it. We'll make our dreams come true. And right as soon as Mina heard that, Mina was like, yeah, nah, you're right. We'll make our dreams come true. They go and test only to figure out that Mina passed on her first time and on Kafka's fifth time taking the test, he still failed, which all of us already knew anyways because bro didn't finally pass until he was 30 years old. But even after Kafka failed the test, he looked at Mina and told her, hey, don't worry. I am going to catch up to you soon enough and I will be there fighting by your side. And Mina just kind of said, uh, uh, okay. And I think that was the first time that Mina experienced trauma from Kafka because from the time that they were children, they have made a promise to each other that they were going to wipe out Kaiju together. And to see the look in Mina's eyes, bro, to see the fear in her eyes of knowing that she passed the test while Kafka didn't, if you go all the way back to right before this war started, bro, I remember Mina and Kafka had that conversation over lunch, right? And one thing that Mina recalled about Kafka is that, hey, even whenever Kafka was afraid of something, there was never a time where he didn't take the lead and always be the leader of everything. He was always comforting me when I was afraid, even if he was afraid. And I think this is one of those moments where Mina knew that Kafka was there to support her and she was afraid, but the difference this time is that Kafka was not gonna be at her side to be able to protect her. All those times growing up, whenever she was afraid, Kafka could always run to her classroom and protect her whenever they were growing up. But now, Mina's 18 years old and about to join the defense force by herself, and she's not gonna be fighting alongside of the man that they had been talking about this since they were children. So it was wild to see this be that first moment of true like fear and trauma for Mina. And I felt for her dog, I truly felt for her because we go from her joining the defense force to them doing marksman training. And on the first marksman testing training, Mina absolutely decimates not only the target that they were shooting at, but buildings behind that target and the ground, the whole environment, just destroyed from the amount of force that Mina could let off with a shot. And from the moment that she let off that shot, the defense force started doing testing on her, only to figure out that she is a super artillery assault specialist. 
which virtually mean virtually what bro virtually means what we already knew mina is a marksman specialist whenever she's using a gun she is able to draw out more latent power from a gun than what anybody else on the defense force can you can do and that is why mina is known as the super giant class kaiju killer because she can use those guns and draw out enough force to take out the cores in those huge kaiju. And before Mina, this was the biggest threat to civilians. These kaiju take the longest to destroy naturally because you have to find their core amongst the huge meat of kaiju that it is. So whenever Isao got word from the research department that Mina is the only person in the Defense Force history that had this type of working or worked like this isao immediately told itami she's the missing link neutralizing kaiju will never be the same and seeing the look on isao's face right here dog that hurt my heart just as bad as anything else in this chapter hurt my heart bro because you can see how intense Esau is gazing straight forward. He's probably not looking at anybody in this moment. Just hearing that somebody is able to take out super giant class Kaiju right after his wife got done dying, trying to defend the city from Kaiju number six, just makes Esau probably more hurt than ever. Not only did all those civilians die, not only did number six bring that blizzard and massive cataclysm with it, but Esau lost the love of his life. His daughter lost her mother. So it makes sense why Esau looked so intense right here because Esau truly knew Mina is going to change the scope of the Defense Force forever. Nobody's going to have to feel what my family is experiencing right now. But once again, bro, Mina is afraid of her own power and now these people in the defense force that are higher ups aren't even explaining to her how amazing she really is. She's just wondering to herself, what's about to happen to me? I know what I just did, but Kafka, can you please hurry up and come by my side like you said you were going to be? She is just a young woman getting into a world that's fully about war with monsters. How could she not be terrified, bro? If this same exact thing was happening in real life right now, I guarantee any of y'all going out to fight monsters would be scared. And Mina's fears were truly brought to the forefront the first time that she went into battle and saw a super giant kaiju standing in front of her. She looked at that thing and said, wait, that's what y'all think that I'm about to beat? And they said, yeah, dog, if you can output the same level of force that you did whenever we were doing the training with this weapon, then you'll take out the core in that thing easy. That's the least of our worries right now. And if you do this, then we are going to have the least amount of casualties amongst the civilians and amongst all of your comrades. And she said, the least amount, bro. This super giant kaiju has already done so much damage. And as she's thinking that to herself, she's just hearing all of her comrades and soldiers screaming about trying to block off certain areas or screaming about certain limbs being cut and hurt, talking about how, please don't miss this shot. We need you to hit this snipe shot. And Mina just thinks to herself, bro, if I miss this shot on this super giant Kaiju, all these voices that I hear right now, all these people that have already lost their lives, all of their sacrifices, will fully be in vain. And she just had that immense amount of fear sweep over her. And once again, who would not have fear sweep over them right then? To have so many lives that you are basically at risk of losing if you don't perform, that's, that's an awful thought to think of, bro. That's an awful thought to think of. And that is her first time going into combat. People are automatically depending on Mina to be the artillery super giant class slayer. And she adapted into it, bro. Whenever she realized that she had to take that thing out, Kafka immediately flashed into her head. And he said, when that time comes, I'll be right there fighting by your side. And she kind of turned and looked over her shoulder and realized, hey, bro, this is reality. Kafka's not here right now. He made that promise. But in reality, where I'm living at right now and this super giant class kaiju is coming towards me and taking out my comrades and killing all these civilians, Kafka's not here. And immediately somebody says, shoot. And she just says, liar, as she takes that shot. 
and we finally understand why all the way back in chapter one, Mina called Kafka a liar because that is her inspiration to not only take out all of these kaiju, but it still is her inspiration to actually want to fight, bro. Anytime that she's taking out those super giants, she wants Kafka to be at her side. She doesn't want to be taking out these things by herself. And to this day, to this day, to this day, she still has fears fighting giant kaiju anytime that she has to take one out. But regardless of those fears, she knows that she can't mess up because people are depending on her. And this was just one of the most absolute insane introspective chapters that we have gotten in Kaiju number eight, bro. I fully understood all the emotions that Mina felt. And I'm sure that there's even some that y'all felt that maybe I'm not depicting well in this video, but we all understood why Mina feels the way that she does. I understand her disdain for Kafka. She's terrified, bro. She's terrified. These kaiju took out everything that she had as a child. They took Miko the cat from her, which is also a play on why I think she has Bako the tiger now. Miko the cat meant so much to her as a young girl, and now that she's a full-grown woman, instead of having a small cat, she's gotten a full-grown feline in the form of a tiger, right? Went from Miko the cat to Bako the tiger. Just kind of makes sense when you put two and two together, but Kaiju took everything from Mina, bro. So it makes sense why Mina is mad at Kafka because the Kaiju took everything from you too, right, bro? That's why we made that promise together whenever we were growing up, that we were gonna be standing side by side taking out kaiju together so i fully understood so much about mina in this chapter and i hope that we continue to get more information about mina because this introspective look was absolutely insane dog but nah after that we actually got more so into seeing what's happening in the current action and we see just mina and bako being absolute badass in this series and honestly my only complaint in this chapter bro my only complaint in the chapter Man, it, it felt like Bako just got copied and pasted and just rotated around in a bunch of different panels. But for the most part, Bako's positioning did not change at all in the chapter. And that was my only complaint. I was like, bro, you can at least make Bako do some cool stuff. The fact that Mina has a tiger, bro? So, nah, I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, Bako's still badass. Mina's still badass. And I think one of the coolest shots in this whole chapter was right at the end, whenever Mina was about to take the shot at number 14 as it was teleporting. 14 shot off that blast at Mina, and then Mina and Bako, in midair, bro, take a shot at Kaiju number 14, and Bako just basically is being used as recoil control more or less and just that shot bro of mina taking that blast at number 14 was amazing and the chapter basically concluded with mina hitting number 14 and we saw that left side of it was completely blasted into smithereens so she did penetrate that force field that was around number 14 but for some reason i just still can't imagine that this is going to be this easy bro it was very badass and it was dope to see, but something tells me, man, maybe this kaiju has a way to regenerate or maybe it has a way to still keep on fighting at a very high level, even though Mina took out a couple of those faces. Because if anything, the way that I saw it is she basically took out the left two faces, but the right two faces are still there. And one thing that's interesting is we're still seeing this kaiju have a face that's crying. We're seeing one of the sides of that kaiju shooting out blasts. So I'm starting to think that each face can actually do something different. And if each face can do something different, what if like one of the faces could eat the blast that Mina shoots at it and then shoot the blast back out of another mouth? You know what I mean? Because you gotta also remember that, hey, Esau was the one that knew that Mina was going to be the pinnacle of the defense force. Mina was going to change everything because she is a marksman. So you have to know that Kaiju number nine designed 14 to be able to try to deal with a marksman, the best marksman in the Japan defense force. So that's the only reason I say, I don't think that it's gonna be that easy. And there's probably gonna be a lot more happening in this fight, but I will be the first to say, Mina, I'm investing my stocks in you, bro. I am 100% behind you now, and I don't know why I was ever tripping, bro. I just wanted to see more from you, but 
what we're getting so far, Mina's different, man. Mina's different. She was already one of the most BA people in the story. And now seeing all of her backstory, and not even all of it, but some more of it, you really start to understand more of where Mina's coming from. You understand why she didn't like Kafka and why she was upset with him. But now that Kafka has taken the appropriate steps, Kafka's training, Kafka's chasing his dreams, just like he told Mina they were gonna do. Mina's happy again, bro. And not only that, Mina is waiting for Kafka to come back and catch up and fight by her side. And honestly, man, a dope conclusion to this fight could be a Mina does end up getting drastically hurt, just like everybody else has been getting drastically hurt. And then before Mina actually has whatever happened to her, Kafka is there and they are next to each other side by side fighting against number 14, bro. I need to see that panel, man. I need to see that panel of Kafka and Mina next to each other. So, hey, we'll see what ends up happening in this fight. As always, if you came and watched this video, arigato. And I'm trying to decide whether I want to drop a Sakamoto video this week or another Kaiju video. Let me know some topics that you might want to hear about from either series down below. Regardless, you know those are my babies, so I'm cool talking about either or. But yeah, man, other than that, I will talk to y'all later. Peace.